I wanted to add one final takeaway, something that surprised me. It's time for a new feeding station for our goats. We bought this freestanding feeder. The small one we had for them in their shelter just wasn't quite big enough for the number of goats that we have. DJ, do you like your new feed station? Yeah. Every time, every, <laughs> every time we bring food out here for our goats, or almost any time we're out here at all, the goats jump on us with their muddy feet. As you can imagine, that gets old pretty fast. Anyway, we're looking forward to this new feeding station because we can bring a larger amount of hay out here less frequently. Also, would you, everybody calm down. It's all right, yes. Also, having their feed station outside of their shelter should help keep their shelter a cleaner place for them to sleep. You be a good goat. You be a good goat. What I have to build is a way to keep their feed dry out here. My first thought was to build a large metal roof hanging over their pen right here. Wendy wasn't too happy with the materials cost for that, and she explained that she'd like to be able to move this station around occasionally. So what I'll be doing is building just a simple two by four box with a plastic roof over it. As you can see, the goats will make a mess out here, but hey, it is a goat pen. The whole idea of a movable feeding station is an experiment, and I'm not sure exactly how well it will work. We just recently found something out here that illustrates what might go wrong with this kind of an approach. This is a horn. Actually, it's a skur from one of our goats. I'm not sure which goat. Skurs are what can regrow after you've disbudded the goats. It's kind of interesting. There is a little blood. It takes some force to knock one of these off. Our goats like to headbutt each other and rub their heads against things. They'll rub their bodies up and down the fencing to scratch themselves. All of this roughhouse behavior could potentially knock over or break the mobile feeding station. We'll just have to see over time if it works out. If all of my designs worked perfectly the first time, I wouldn't have as much content for this channel.
Okay, I was waiting to do the lid until I had the stand built this far. I've just measured it, and unfortunately the material I have left to build the lid, I'm just one inch short. The way the lid's going to work is it's going to have a frame of 2 by 4s on, on the underside of it that will fit all the way around the top of the stand. So what I'm going to do is I'll take this 2 by 4 off and screw it down under here all the way across, making the top just a little bit narrower. I've already built the 2x4 frame for the roof. I've laid it on top of the plastic panels so it would be super easy for me to just tape off some registration guides around the corners. The plastic panels weren't wide enough, so I'm going to be overlapping two of them to get the width that I need. All I have to do now is reposition that frame underneath the panels so I can attach it together with these gasket screws. I've added a couple of screw eyes with a rope for a handle. The front is unbraced so the feeder can slide in. There's plenty of room on the sides so that somewhat heavy feeder can just be walked in one side at a time. I've also left more room at the top to accommodate the hay. I'm hoping that this flexible outer edge helps discourage our goats from wanting to jump all the way on top of the structure. There's plenty of room between the, the roof frame and the top of the stand so it won't get stuck and it shouldn't be too difficult to put on and take off. I didn't want to permanently attach the roof to the stand mostly because it'll be easier to move the feeding station around when we need to. A little lighter weight a little less awkward. Let me show you how we'll do that. Plus, I thought it'd be nice when we have extended periods of dry weather to maybe just leave the roof off so our goats can get at the hay from above as well. And here it is, all set up for our goats. I'll have to wait a few days to see how it handles the rain and how it handles our goats. This might be another nice feature. I can just bring the hay up, take that lid off, drop the new hay in, from out here without ever having to deal with our rambunctious horde. Our does have a new feeder too. 
we'll probably put this just inside the temporary shelter until we know for sure that that feeding station works well for the bucks. I didn't want to build two feeding stations just in case I needed to modify my design. I've been waiting for a good hard rain to show you how well the new feeding station works. But all we've been getting during the daytime is sort of a light spitting rain. It's rained harder at night. We even got a nice hailstorm. I had this whole bit worked out of my head where I'd be actually under that feeding station, jostling for space with the goats to stay dry so I could prove just how well the hay is staying dry. I'm happy to say that the hay is dry, so the feeding station is doing exactly what it was supposed to. I'm also happy to say that the feeding station remains in this corner. Our goats haven't been able to push it around. The freestanding feeder underneath has been slid over to one side, so obviously the goats can move that. Hopefully, they don't just push it all the way out from underneath the feeding station. If they do, we'll just have to slide it back under. It took our goats just two days to figure out how to completely flip off the roof. The solution is clear, and it probably should have been obvious to me from the very beginning to do this. I used extension springs with hooks to clip down each corner of the roof. Now I know everybody out there is probably wondering, how do I use extension springs? Well, this is one of those applications. In order to keep those extension springs from just flying off to who knows where, when we unlatch the roof, I had to clip on screw eyes to one end of each spring. Overall, I'm happy with the design, although Wendy and I disagree with exactly where the 2x4 braces should have been placed. I think it's pretty cute to see the goats climbing over and under and through those 2x4s like a jungle gym. Wendy would have liked to see the, the bracing placed a little more even with the catch tray underneath the freestanding feeder just because it'd be easier for the goats to just reach in and get the hay. I'll probably try it her way when we build the one for the does. We did move the does freestanding feeder inside one of their stalls of their regular shelter, not that temporary shelter that I showed you before. I'm not sure exactly when I'll be building their feeding station. I kind of want to see how the bucks use this a little bit more first. Give a little more thought to it. We'll see how it goes. I wanted to add one final takeaway, something that surprised me. Being able to see the goats eating out here in the open is just more fun. There's more light, they've got more room to walk around, they've got more time 
to get what they want. Being on this side of the fence, it feels like you're in less of a hurry to get out of their pen. And having them right there, you can see them so much better. Watching them eat out here in the open just adds another dimension of life and energy to this place. <laughs> 